Hi, welcome to Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Italeries, sort of, because we think it might be a Hasegawa kit masquerading in here, 148 scale F104G Starfighter. And this particular kit does come with, if we're hoping, a really nice kit inside, but with two fantastic special edition markings, as we can see down here on the side. So, as you can see, that is what we're going to get. You can't get much nicer than that for a full tail. The red one, yep, okay, that's lovely, but actually with the actual uh, yellow or the gold with the white and the black, it really does look quite stunning this particular one okay so right the way through on the box we can see we're going to have a huge decal sheet just down on the here kit number for this one is two triple seven and on the end and a little bit more down on it as you can see just on the back here now this is sealed and i'm only going on the fact of what i've heard but this is in fact the hasagawa kit it's not uh an italery kit or anything else like that it is a reboxing of the Hasegawa. Now, if you followed along with me, you will know we've actually built this particular kit before, and lo and behold, that's what we're looking for. It is actually the Hasegawa kit masquerading inside here, which is not a bad thing, because this is one of the finest uh, F-104 Starfighter kits you can get anyway. So, starting off in the instructions. Okay, Italy, I don't know if they're being slightly left behind with these giant pull-out page instructions like this everyone seems to have moved away from it slightly now but uh, there we go so usual thing we got the parts trees down on there right the way through and then to be honest we have built a few of these over the years now but usual thing starting with the cockpit the seat the various items down in there straightforward out of the box this one so there's no extras that you might find in perhaps other reboxings like you know when Eddard do it but we've got the engine the actual wheel well right the way through there's a few poly caps to pop in there and then put the bulk heads in opening up a few holes on the top for the lights as well okay no section going down in there so we've got the underside being put in there for the nose wheel door the vents for the rear parts as well intakes being fitted back of the actual um, cockpit area instrument instrument combing panel things on in there and the nose wings so we do have um, and you can pose them as well so we've got straightforward those little stubby wings so we've got slats flaps and ailerons down on there as well the air brake system can be a little bit complicated to get right and get them at the correct angles so just taking your time on those and then we've got wheels um, uh, sorry the actual wings being fitted and then the all important T and the rudder situated on there. Nose gear assembly being fitted as normal, main gear assembly down on there as well. And then we've actually got the tires um, and then we've got the hub system going down onto there. One piece uh, no nozzle on the back, arrestor cable uh, or catch line cable on there and the ventral fin being fitted in. And then over on the other side, those all important wing tanks okay being fitted in making it turn into a true starfighter and then obviously main cockpit pito tube on the front and you're good to go and then wow that's your markings you're going to be getting so again it's going to be a little bit complex um, and then when you marry it up with those all important decal sheet this is a quite a big decal sheet as you can see and if i catch it in the light you catch it on the carry film you can see all the stars are in section so it's not like the stars are standalone and you've got to work them out but they've shown you how it should orientate down on here as well both sides top and bottom okay so you've got those down on there just like that and then on the other side we've actually got in the red okay so we've got that gorgeous ferrari red right the way over it and then obviously with the italian markings on there a little bit more simple on that one but again absolutely striking with all you've got is red and black two of my favorite colors and quite frankly it's like the corporate colors for here at flory models as well okay so there we go that's those now we're not going to spend forever going through the the kit because to be honest we have looked at this kit before in other reviews if you want to have a look at those in perhaps a little bit more detail but we just have a, a quick rundown of what you're going to get so unfortunately it is a one piece bag does the lot okay but we've got the two fuselages down on there if you haven't seen it beautiful recessed details for the engraving for the panel lining and for the riveting detail and then right the way through and then you've got this gorgeous detailing down on the back if i can catch it in the light there we go just catching it there you can see all that gorgeous rivet work going down on there the nose they can be a little bit flashy some of these kits they're a little bit older it is the the hard crispy traditional uh, Hasegawa uh, plastic we've got a little bit of limited detail down here in the no section for the cockpit but apart from that it's pretty much devoid everywhere you're just going to be locating these in and you might see you've got the rib areas in there for the formers 
We've got the wings, and again, you can see on the close-up, all the gorgeous riveting detail down on there. The bulge doors, all the door sections, things on there as well, as you can see, no problem at all. We do have the odd ejector pin, to be honest, inside the wheel well doors. That's a little bit of a pain. You've even got them in the speed brake doors. It is just showing its age just a little bit, this particular kit, okay? We've got the nozzle section down here on the back the cockpit and as I say you can actually see in the cockpit itself it's not too bad the detail down in there you could easily get away with not having to do anything all right and then some of the other areas the main wheel ones and obviously we've got down there the formers rear parts of the cockpit uh, back and bottom down on there with the, the cooling vents for the electronics gear all being fitted as well but again nicely done no problem with that at all we've got the seat so it is pretty much devoid. A little bit of sink marks down in it, but it's probably the one time you don't mind it on seats because it adds a little bit of depth to them. Okay, so no problems with those in there. But if you wanted to, you could pop in there with an aftermarket uh, resin seat, no problem at all. Okay, and then down in here, we've got part of the nozzle. We've got the actual tires down in here. You can see they are one piece. You are gonna have to take out a couple of eject pins out of one side of them. Okay, but that's pretty much a straightforward job down on there. But you can see all those parts, no problem. Choice of hubs. So you've got like that spoke type hub or the more solid one as well, depending on the variant you're doing. Control grip, things like that, as you can see on those. Then we've got pretty much a mirror on this one. But down in here, we've got the actual first stage uh, sorry, the rear uh, nozzle, and then we've got the afterburner ring being fitted down in there. Some of the other parts in the cockpit, we've got that all important instrument panel, which again is not too bad just on its own. Okay, and then some of the other smaller parts as we work up here. And then we've got a different type of seat depending on the different versions you were doing. It was saying Hasegawa did pretty much cover every version of the Starfighter. This is obviously the G. Okay, again, tops of the wings, beautiful recess details, the slats again, no problem with that whatsoever. The tail plane, as you can see, we've got some nice detailing on that one as well. And then obviously all the control surfaces right the way through, okay? We do have, unfortunately, and it's always been a bugbear of mine, you can probably see down in here, we've got ejector pins on the bottom of the flap and the actual aileron itself. Always a problem because when you sand those off, you end up losing the riveting detail. So what I tend to do is over rivet again, then sand, and then you'll be good to go. Same, unfortunately, applies for down here on the forward edge slats as well. They've got ejector pins in there as well. So it is the only downside to this particular kit. As I said, it's been a bugbear of mine since the start with it. Different type of nozzle. So we've got the longer nozzle down here at the back. I actually don't think it uses this one, or it might be. I'm not sure which nozzle it uses, but you do get different types. One piece welded together, nose wheel, actually some quite nice detail in there as well, and no real ejector pins as well, which is a nice touch being that way. And then obviously we've got those all important tic tacs for the wings, depending if you're gonna be using them or not. Okay, but putting them in there. Clear parts, to be honest, we've had them out loads of times before. They are very nice indeed. They're pretty clear, no problems with them, no center seams or anything else you're gonna to have to worry about. They are literally what they are, so we're not gonna worry about going those through before. Again, if you want a more detailed look at this kit, have a look at our Eddard reboxing of it, things like that. There's loads of other reviews on this one. But it is nice, it is the actual Italian one. Great to have it in these special color schemes as well. Something just a little bit different from perhaps that normal sort of natural metal finish look or some of the other schemes that are out there. So to have these two schemes now is an absolute joy. And definitely if you want a little bit different at the shows, that's what you want to do with it. So there we go. That is Italeri's new reboxing of the Hasegawa kit. That's the F4104G Starfighter in 148 scale.